and then just divided that by the number of cells to figure out what cell voltage each of these connections should have. Just doing a little bit of interior work on that capsule right now, and I'm switching gears to working on a little module for the scan car, actually. And I wanted to kind of document a little bit of my process for approaching this and how to work with this. So this just came from battery hookup. It is um, a growing method of battery building by getting a module that was on their site advertised as lightly used, which they've always had honest products in my experience. Um, they're supposed to have anywhere, it's somewhere above 90% capacity remaining. So they're basically just either used very briefly or used for backup purposes, things like that. This module actually came out of a, a Ford vehicle of some kind. Um, Ford Motor Company is that abbreviation there. And it is a fairly energy dense, yet also as far as testing shows, um, um, forums that I found, a pretty well powered and well balanced uh, module. So this is over a little over three kilowatt hours, it's 3.3 kilowatt hours, fairly small pack, maybe 50 pounds. Um, and it comes with fully constructed discharge, which you can also attach your BMS to for charge, um, and a nominal voltage of 88 volts. So it's a really well-rounded battery. The only problem is when you get these, they have cells installed and then pins that you can attach things to, but you don't have any battery management established on this. Um, they end up being pretty well balanced in most cases, but you have to have something that will keep them that way, or you have to balance charge them. So my intention is to add a BMS to this battery. In order to do that, you have to know which cells connect to which of these pins. Um, you could either do it two ways. You could either get a plug that matches and then you pin your plug to match the right cells that go into the BMS, or you could just either bypass this by soldering directly to the pins or finding some other way to not have to find a matching plug. Depends on what you want to do with the battery. In this case, it's going literally under the seat of the scan car, and so there's no reason for it to have any beauty, that, you know, inherently around it. So I'm just going to solder on each of these pins, but you have to know which pin is for which cell. And there's actually two of these ports. So I want to show you, at least walk you through the thought process for identifying that. I have mapped my pins. So we successfully determined which one was which using just a, like, Harbor Freight $5 uh, multimeter. So what I did is I initially just knew there were two um, sockets that had the um, connections to each of the cell groups. So I drew those two as mocks and identified which one was one, which one was two. I just labeled them as one and on the other side I put a little two in that little spot there. Um, in order to figure out which cell group was which, I went ahead and just measured the full pack voltage as it sat, which was at 94.2 at the time, and then just divided that by the number of cells to figure out what cell voltage each of these connections. So I drew out all of my 24 cells. This is the 24S uh, pack. It should be zero when you do one to one, right? One negative to one negative, but at one positive, you should see 3.9. At two positive, you should see 7.8. And on up this line here, each of the voltages you measure, as they are close to this value, you know which cell group you're measuring. So initially what I did was open up negative discharge, which is one negative. I know that at least one of these pins, I don't know if you can see there are pins separated by plastic there, has to be connected to one negative. So what I did was I just touched the negative of my multimeter to this, and I've only got one hand and so I'm holding a camera on the left, but then I took the positive and I just started touching it to those pins one at a time. No risk of short circuiting because they're all separated by uh, plastic spacers until I found voltage. Once I got voltage on there, I was able to figure out um, what cell I was touching by looking at which voltage it was closest to. And then I could hold my multimeter on that one. With the, so I put the positive one on the one that I found. And then I could figure out which one was the negative by touching it until I got that same voltage. Then I could figure out which pin was one negative. Um, and then I would map that down here. As it turned out, there were actually two one negatives. Those X's were blank pins. One negative was in the one over from on the top row, one from the right, and then two from the right were both one negative. From there, I could then hold my 
probe and I just actually cinched it down with that nut there so it stayed in place. And I can take the positive probe and just start probing each of the slots, comparing it to the voltages I identified to figure out which one was which. As it turned out, on the first slot, it was all of the even pins because there are, um, there's two cells per line that's separated out. So it would make sense that one side would be the pot evens or odds and the other side would be the opposite of that, right? And I was able to just keep going down the line, comparing voltages and labeling it as what it was. So this had one negative on this, this first, um, first plug and then it was two positive, four positive, six positive, up and down the line until we got all the way to 24 positive, at which point there were actually two 24 positives because it's the end of the line, they needed to have one for like reading cell voltage or like full pack voltages, things like that, right? On the other side, I just went around, I left my multimeter negative screwed onto this terminal, started going into this one, did the exact same thing, and on port number two I found that all the blank ports were clustered on this side, and then I started seeing, so there's six blanks here. And then I got one positive, three positive, five, seven. I actually skipped a pin and started labeling it wrong until I realized my mistake, so I had to scratch these out. Seven positive, nine positive, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, on down the line. 23 positive is the highest odd number. So I was able to map all of those out. Now my BMS, whatever BMS I have, I just know that I have, um, this, is, this left side is my positive of the pack and this is my negative of the pack. So BC0 is my battery negative. And then it goes one positive, two positive, three positive, four positive, all down the line. Until I, this red one is my 14 positive. This black one is my 15 positive until I get all the way to 24 positive. I connect each of those to each of the appropriate pins. So I'm gonna mount this on top. Half are gonna go this way, all of the odd ones. Half are gonna go this way, all of the even ones. And you have to connect them to this socket either by wiring it into a matching socket or by just connecting it directly to the wire. And one thing to be careful of while you do this is you don't want to have two probes sticking in together. If those two probes touch, you short circuit a cell group. And best case scenario would be you just melt this pin, at which point it's unaccessible and doesn't fit correctly. That's why I attached my negative terminal or my negative probe to this side exclusively so I could just have one piece of metal that was sticking in between um, with those plastic separators. It was totally safe to do. But if you do touch two of those pins together electrically, either by two probes touching or somehow breaking down those separators, you will have a little spark, probably lose a little bit of metal, and might make that socket unworkable. I'm just gonna connect this up and it'll just follow this pinning pattern. You can do the same process with any module that you get. They all, almost all come with some sort of a socket that you can read out of them. I mean, we got some super beast headway cells over there and they have the same exact thing. It's just a, a plug with slots that you can uh, have to figure out which pin is which. Just to connect your negative to there and then start probing, finding the voltages, knowing what you're looking for. And you could do the same process with any pack that you use. So we'll get this put on and catch you guys in the next time.